a leader from our neighboring state, Karnataka, uh, Sri Jairam Demeshji. He is with us uh, to share the Congress Party's uh, uh, views on Parth Joda Yatra, and uh, he is also the media convener of this Yatra. He is uh, first time in our press club. He is very delighted to have here. Uh, and we are also very delighted to receive him on behalf of the media community here. Uh, Mr. Jay, uh, Jay Ram Demeshi is uh, a, a very familiar uh, to our community. Even though he is concentrated on uh, Delhi politics, he is hailing from Chikmagalur, which is similar to our state. Uh, even in econo uh, ecologically and politically, because we cannot uh, uh, um, we cannot um, uh, um, care what the, the Chikmagalur election. We cannot forget the Chikmagalur election. Uh, the Congress Party you know, got its uh, regained its importance in Indian politics in the uh, Chikmagalur election. And likewise, uh, the Congress Party is gaining its importance from Kerala uh, uh, the, in Vainad through Vainad election last year. So uh, let us have his views on this uh, Yatra and politics. So uh, be on behalf of Kollam Press Club, welcome you, sir, to the Meet the Press program. Thank you. <coughs> you want to say something, Bulra? Bhumani Raitala, Mathima Prorata Road and Yangaka, Nandayana, Adinana Parayana, Karanam, Parajodo Yatra, Pagamai, Sri Rahul Gandhi Naikina, Muvairati, and New Tier over the kilometer there Kemula, Kanyakumari Mudal Kashmir, where Nutiamba the Diva Satinde, Uruvelia Padayatra, Mai, Nangal. Ibadat Kollam Jilid lek inilah yang anak perwesi cedah. Apol Kollam te matthema perwarta garade tarawat ayat lla i press club. Nengal le matthema vipagat inde chairmanum, akhilendia Congress committee ada general secretaryum. Nama koke uru perijaya pada telinga yo mukhore deyo, awasnya kita illa ta warnam perijaya nu ayat lla mun kendera mandiri Sri Jairam Ramesh jie. Ingane uru Meet the press peribadi lek Chennichu yang dalam ini peril. Jangan ada yang dengen. I press club ini president perpetas Sri Biju Nodum, secretary Sri Sanal D Prem Nodum, macam muruven matiuma perwarta Nodum. Nengal dah faham tu yang dalam nanti hari ini anam. Ibu da beranum, nengal le kananum. I Bharat Jodo Yatra itu mai bandha perpet matiuma perwarta gar kulla matiuma perwarta itu mai samwadi kianam. Perawasan munda iya yang dalam dana. Nengal dengen noki kanan ada. Terusi item dengan lada pahat itu nalla jodoh dengan ke. Ini adalah naow bazar yang mana item lala otis jaya lala item kudi ana. Nengal agrihi kena de. Sofah yang mana item dengan lada elah jodoh dengan lalu. Aduh, walau tak gawur gawur mana item jodoh dengan lalu matra lala. Ini tu mai bandha pete. Ini tu gaya dengan lalu. Maru badi barayan kadi ena. Oru ala dene ana. Nengal wisesh tadi di ayi udah kicchan ecet lala. Nama de jaran ramesi. Aduh, orang yang kudal derkham item samsaeri kena lala. Nengal orang pam. Nengal de Jilla Congress Committee President Sri Rajendra Prasad ande UDF finde neda awum, adu bolat ane munke PCC General Secretaryum, i jathe ida Jilla Coordinator umai terla Sri K C Rajan sir, nama ro kodi ande. Kalam D C C ida phagat ana mathyamat ande ego bana nerwayi kena prepetas Sri Unni Krishnan nengal de opam ande. Kudel samsaari kene lla over to Jaramji. Thank you. <coughs> First of all, I must apologize. Yesterday there was some confusion and some of you were unable to enter the Empire Convention Center at Chattanur. So I'm very sorry for what happened yesterday, but I'm glad that uh, we are meeting this evening, this afternoon. Well, <coughs> as you know, the Congress Party launched the Bharat Jodo Yatra on the 7th of September from Kanyakumari 
and the actual yatra began in the morning of the 8th the yatra was for 3 days in tamil nadu before it entered kerala and the yatra will take 18 days in kerala then the yatra will go to karnataka for 21 days telangana for 13 days Andhra Pradesh for four days, Maharashtra for 16 days, Madhya Pradesh for 16 days, Uttar Pradesh for five days. Please remember, five, not two, five days. Then two days in Delhi, 21 days in Rajasthan, five days in Haryana, five days in Punjab, five days in Jammu and Kashmir. So the total time that we will take to complete 3,750 kilometers, maybe between 3,600 to 3,800 kilometers, is about 150 days. This is the longest Padhyatra ever undertaken by a political party in a democracy. The longest Padhyatra in the world was the long march of Mao, which was 8,000 kilometers. But in a democracy, I'm using the word very, very carefully, in a democracy, this is the longest Padhyatra undertaken by the world's second oldest political party. It is India's oldest political party and the world's second oldest political party, the Indian National Congress. So we are doing this Yatra, Bharat Jodo Yatra. Today, yesterday we came to Kollam. Today is a rest day. We are going to be taking a break after seven days, we have covered 150 kilometers from Kanyakumari. And uh, we will be taking another break on the 23rd uh, after another seven days of Padhyatra. So today we are all relaxing. So we have some time to meet the media and the press. Some people are just unwinding after walking for so long. Now, I want to address two questions. Uh, why, is Kong, why is the Bharat Jodo Yatra not going to Gujarat or UP or Himachal Pradesh? When the Congress Party's main opponent is the BJP. This is an argument that is often given. First, let me say that this is Kanyakumari to Kashmir Yatra. It is a south to north Yatra. It is like the Yatra Shankaracharya started from Kaladi 1300 years ago. He also went from south to north. Bhakti movement also started south to north. So Bharat Jodo Yatra is going from south to north. It takes minimum 90 days to reach Gujarat on Padhyatra when you start from Kanyakumari. Minimum 90 days. By the time election in Gujarat is over, election in Himachal Pradesh is over. So there is no way, even if Superman with 56 inch chest, you know whom I am referring to, even if Superman were to walk, he will take 90 days at least to reach Gujarat from Kanyakumari. So there was no way we could reach Gujarat or Himachal Pradesh in the Yatra. Secondly, this Yatra is like this. Here is Kanyakumari, here is Kashmir. The Yatra is somewhat like this, straight line. Now, we studied five different routes and we selected this route. We selected this route because 
it's no it's a straight line number one number two this is the only route from kanyakumari to kashmir which is on padyatra all other routes you require bus you require some car you require some boat so this is the only route on which you can go by padyatra number one number two we are not going through forest areas so because there is security angle there has to be security clearance because mr rahul gandhi has the highest security protection so we could not select the other some other routes so based on geography based on security we selected this route kanyakumari to kashmir so this is the reason why gujarat and himachal don't figure but in karnataka the congress's main opponent is bjp in telangana we are fighting bjp in maharashtra we are fighting bjp in madhya pradesh we are fighting bjp in rajasthan we are fighting bjp in haryana we are fighting bjp so anybody who says that we are not going through states where congress is fighting bjp does not know the full details of the yatra number 1 number 2 uh, there is one state which we are passing through i will not name that state we are passing through one state where the ruling party is the a team of the bjp so we are going through a state where we are fighting not bjp directly but we are fighting bjp indirectly you all know which state that is we are spending 18 days in that state now so the main purpose of the bharat jodo yatra why are we doing bharat jodo yatra why are we spending five and a half months walking living in containers 120 people are walking 30% are women average age is 38 why are they walking they are walking for three reasons one india is being weakened because of economic inequality price rise unemployment gst concentration of economic power so economic inequality is tearing india apart first reason second reason social polarization is tearing india apart religion caste language food dress anything is used by the bjp to divide our society polarize our society so india is being torn apart and third reason why india is being torn apart is because of political over centralization everything is being centralized in one person one leader one party the prime minister's office all the powers of state governments are being taken away and the center and the prime minister's office is becoming all powerful so that is why we are doing bharat jodo because bjp is doing bharat todo because bharat is being todoed on economic equality inequality bharat is being todoed because of social polarization and bharat is being todoed because of political over centralization we are doing bharat jodo incidentally ours is bharat jodo it is not europe jodo like some other parties are doing ours is a bharat jodo yatra not a europe jodo yatra which some parties who criticize the congress party are engaged in right now so the bharat jodo yatra we are using it as an instrument of raising issues 
relating to economic inequality, social polarization and political centralization. One outcome of the Yatra will be the strengthening of the Congress party organization. We aim to mobilize block level workers, district level workers, state level workers and strengthen the Congress party as a result of the Yatra. There is great enthusiasm and excitement in the Congress organization. And the public response Mr. Rahul Gandhi and the Bharat Yatris are getting. Every day in the morning they walk for three and a half hours. The crowds are anywhere between 3,000 to 5,000. In the evening they walk from 4 to 7, about 25 to 30,000 people walk. And during the day for an hour and a half or two Mr. Rahul Gandhi meets, uh, he meets uh, fishermen fishermen, fisherwomen, Mahatma Gandhi Narega workers, school students, college students, people, tomorrow he is meeting cashew workers and cashew entrepreneurs in Kollam, coir workers he will be meeting in Alapura. He met people who oppose the Kerel project, environmentalists. He will meet uh, Karshakas, he will meet farmers in different parts of Kerala. So he will interact. He is not making speeches on the Yatra. The Yatra is not monkey bath Yatra. Yatra is to listen. Not to tell people that I have the answer. But to engage in a conversation with people. Understand their daily worries, daily concerns. Through direct interaction, there is no other political party, no other political leader who has done this in recent times. In fact, no party has done such a yatra ever. So this is the background to the Bharat Jodo Yatra. As I said, we have completed seven days. We are also having Bharat Jodo Yatras in other states where the Bharat Jodo Yatra is not going. Tonight I am going to Assam, then I go to Bhubaneswar, then I go to uh, Calcutta. So we are organizing similar smaller Bharat Jodo Yatras in every state of the country. So imagine Bharat Jodo Yatra is like the Ganga River. And like the Ganga river has many tributaries. There will be tributaries. In tribute, Malayalam tributary is called Sahanadi. Porshaganadi. So there will be Porshaganadi, Sahanadi, Sahayatra. But main river is the Ganga river. And which is the Bharat Jodo Yatra. So this main Bharat Jodo Yatra. And then there is Parshak, Porshaka Yatra in all states of India, all states, including Arunachal Pradesh, including Assam, including Manipur, including uh, Gujarat, Himachal Pradesh, all the states through which the Yatra is not going through. Now it is possible that with the success of this Yatra, next year we will have an East to West Yatra. Because in India, whenever you do something, there will be people asking you, why are you not doing something else? For everything you do, there are five questions, why you are not doing this? So I want to take this head on. And so it is possible that in 2023, the Yatra will be from Porbandar in Gujarat to Parushram Kund in Arunachal Pradesh. It is possible that we will have this Yatra. But this is the only way to transform Indian politics. I believe the Bharat Jodo Yatra will transform Indian politics, will strengthen the Congress party organization and the manner in which the BJP is attacking the Bharat Jodo Yatra every day. In fact, BJP has been doing Bharat Todo for a long time. Now it is doing Congress Todo. And what happened in Goa, for example, is an example of the diversion that the BJP wants to create, one day container, second day t-shirt, third day shoes, fourth day something else, fifth day Goa. 
They will do this every day to divert people's attention away from Bharat Jodo Yatra. But I have to tell you that the Bharat Jodo Yatra has evoked tremendous response. Newspapers that never cover the Congress are covering Bharat Jodo Yatra. TV channels that never give time to the Congress party are airing programs on Bharat Jodo Yatra. This is remarkable. The climate change in the Indian media in the last 10 days. The Indian media which Indian media is objective, but unfortunately Indian media owners are not objective. Indian media owners you know are controlled only by two or three people. Not in Kerala, I am talking of the rest of the country. So the media also has seen the people's response to the Bharat Jodo Yatra and that has created uh, a new image for the Congress. And I believe that what we are seeing is the emergence of a new Congress. So let me stop here and uh, whatever questions you have, I would be glad to answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Translation You want to translate? Uh, they don't recur at this Okay, with English, no? So you are progressing a huge rally. Where are you? Ah. You said it's for unity, but you are you see you are MLAs and you are leaders. Actually, what is happening in Congress? What's your opinion? So, in Goa? Yes, yes. Are you referring to Goa? Yeah. No. Are you re specifically referring to what's happened in Goa? Yeah. Well, you see, what happened in Goa, this was been going on for a long time. The BJP has been trying to buy Congress MLAs who have been elected on a Congress ticket who have taken an oath in front of God. They took a solemn oath that they will not leave the Congress party. But, you know, they forgot the God. They remembered God is Lakshmi. And when Lakshmi was offered to all these MLAs and the Bharat Jodo Yatra was moving successfully, the BJP fast-forwarded operation in Goa and took away eight of our MLAs. This was an operation that we knew it was happening for quite some time. But they were not successful. But they intensified the effort when the Bharat Jodo Yatra began. And when the BJP saw the public response to the Bharat Jodo Yatra. So I, this is all part of the daily tactics of the BJP to create diversion. Not B, A. 80, ah, 80, yes, right. uh, uh, then uh, how can you uh, carry them to in a pro uh, what struggle against this BJP national? I said CPM in Kerala is a team of BJP in Kerala. Now, nationally, if the CPM wants to support the Congress, they are welcome. But remember, in 1989, the CPM and the BJP combined to support the VP Singh government. The Congress is the only political party in India, only political party in India which has never had an alliance with the BJP. It cannot have an alliance with the BJP. But every other political party has compromised, including the left. The left supported Mr. V.P. Singh along with the BJP to defeat the Congress. Now, you are right. In 2004, the UPA was formed with the help of Harkishan Singh Surjit and uh, Jyoti Basu. Uh, but they withdrew support after a while, if you remember. Now, if the left wants to support the Congress, 
they are welcome to support the Congress. Bharat Jodo Yatra is not a yatra for opposition unity. Bharat Jodo Yatra is a yatra to strengthen the Congress party. Without a strong Congress, you cannot have opposition unity. Secondly, no political party who wants to ally with the Congress should think that alliance means I take everything from Congress and I don't give anything to Congress. So far, everybody has been trying to weaken the Congress. We will not allow this to happen. We will strengthen the Congress party and if there is need for opposition unity, we will certainly work towards opposition unity. But we cannot have opposition unity with parties who are intent or hell-bent in weakening the Congress party. So at the national level, you are right, the CPM has a different view. But in Kerala, the CPM is doing its best to encourage the BJP because only by encouraging the BJP will the CPM succeed in weakening the Congress in Kerala. And we will not allow this to happen. Actually, Congress is now in a situation that where it, it cannot hold their leaders or something. For the past eight years, you are using your leaders, uh, your main uh, frames and all. And if Congress can't even contain their leaders, how can they uh, what all through this BJP right? See, two types of people leave the party. Oh, only those who have benefited from the Congress have left the Congress. Mr. Gulam Nabi Azad was the recipient of everything from the Congress. Youth Congress President, PCC President, Congress, Union Cabinet Minister, CWC Member, General Secretary, Union Minister. Only those people who are benefited from the Congress will kick the Congress and leave the Congress. Number one. Number two, those people against whom, who are vulnerable to investigative agencies, they will go and join the Congress. Moment they join the Congress, they become clean. The Look at the chief minister, sorry, when they join the BJP. Look at the Assam chief minister, classic example. Not one single inquiry against him. But when he was in the Congress, every day the BJP would attack him. But now he has become chief minister. BJP is completely silent. So there is a BJP washing machine. Everybody goes into that BJP washing machine. These eight MLAs in Goa, they have entered the BJP washing machine. They are amongst the most corrupt fellows I know. And the Congress made a mistake in, in letting them into the Congress. I agree. It was a mistake. But now that they have entered the BJP washing machine, they will become spotless white like my kurta. You know, so this people will leave, people will go, people will leave, they will be pressurized to leave. But I think for every person who leaves the Congress party after enjoying power, there are at least 25 or 30 people left in the Congress party, young people who are waiting for positions of authority. For every one Gulam Nabi Azad who has left the Congress party, there are 50 Badrams. I'm sorry, I'm not comparing you with <laughs> Gulam Nabi But there are 50 people like him, youngsters, with political experience, wedded to Congress ideology. So I am not worried when some of these big names leave. The sooner they leave, the better. Instead of focusing on what, sir? National issues. Huh. He is focusing on what? 
LDF. Oh, LDF government. First of all, Mr. Rahul Gandhi has been raising national issues. He has been raising issues of pressurize in the last so many months, especially after the Bharat Jodo Yatra. He has raised issues of price rise. He has raised issues of unemployment day in and day out. Yesterday he raised the issue of China. Why isn't the LDF government saying anything on China? Why are they quiet? The Prime Minister says there is no Chinese incursion. But now we are saying there is Chinese withdrawal. The Prime Minister is on record as having said nobody came from China. There was no incursion from China. So obviously Chinese did not have come on incursion, they came on excursion. So now we are saying they have withdrawn. How could they withdraw if they were not in China, Indian territory? He has raised this issue. He has raised issue of communal violence, violence on Dalits and Adivasis. And of course when you are in Kerala, when you are in Kerala, you focus on issues which are being raised in Kerala. Look, people come like Kerel, for example. People came and raised the issue of Kerel. People came and raised the issue of uh, Mahatma Gandhi Narega work not being available. Uh, people came uh, and raised issues on ports, Adani ports. So, people come and they will raise local issues. But Mr. Rahul Gandhi is the only political leader in India who has day in and day out targeted the BJP. Even Mamta Banerjee one day in the morning will praise the RSS and in the afternoon she will do something else. Mr. Kejriwal we know is a B team of the BJP. So there is no other political party. There is no other political leader and that is why the ED is gone set on him. He was subjected to 55 hours of questioning on a completely bogus case. 55 hours of questioning. Morning, afternoon, evening, night. Because he is targeting the Prime Minister and the Home Minister. He is raising questions, why are all airports being sold to one man? Why are all ports being sold to one man? This man was the 650th richest person in the world in the year 2013. Today is the world's third richest person. Why are all ports being sold to him? Why are all airports being sold to him? Why are all power plants being sold to him? He has raised these questions. So he is being targeted by Mr. Modi. So I think he has raised national issues, but in Kerala, in addition to raising national issues, he has raised issues which concern the people of Kerala, which have been raised by the people who meet him. That is why he has raised it. Yes, sir. Why do I think? Why do the CPM, why would they create yes, an opportunity? Yes, they, they would, they would. Why? Why? The Mamata Banerjee is singularly responsible for the rise of BJP in West Bengal. The left is singularly responsible for the encouragement of the BJP in Kerala because they know the Congress will get weak if the BJP gets strong. They know this. Kerala has traditionally been a two-party system. The LDF versus, not two-party, two-coalition system. UDF, LDF, UDF, LDF. Now suddenly a third party has emerged, the BJP. And it suits the Congress, it suits the left to fight the BJP instead of fighting the Congress. Why? Because the left is one extreme, the BJP is another extreme. The center is only the Congress. So left will always prefer to fight with the right, which is easier. But when you are occupying the center spot, you are in an advantageous position. That's the reason why 
the BJ, the CPM would do anything to fight the BJP in Kerala. I'm talking of in Kerala. Please, not nationally. I'm talking of in Kerala. And weaken the Congress. They may come with the Congress in other states. Now, for example, the left was with us in Manipur. CPM, CPI was fought the election in Manipur along with the Congress party. Similarly, in many other states, they will fight. Why go to Manipur, your neighboring state of Tamil Nadu? Neighboring state of Tamil Nadu, the ruling party coalition is DMK, CPM, CPI, Congress. And, you know, VCK and some smaller uh, Tamil parties. But in Kerala, the political competition is such that the CPM would always encourage the BJP. And frankly, you know, in terms of ideology, they may say whatever they have to say, but in terms of management style, there is absolutely no difference between the CM of Kerala and the PM of India. They are identical. Identical style. I have described the CM of Kerala as Mundu Modi. He is Mundu Modi. There is no difference between the two. They don't listen. They made up their mind. So I think I want to remind you of what EMS Namudripad once said, the great EMS Namudripad. He is really a great Indian political figure. Of course, not many people know that EMS, EMS Namudripad started his political career in the Congress party. He was general secretary of the Congress party in 1936. EMS Namudripad once said, after he had become a communist, he once said, that we will align with the devil to defeat the Congress. It's a very famous statement of EMS. We will align with the devil to defeat the Congress. And they did it in 1989. In 1989, they aligned with the BJP to defeat the Congress. So, I mean, the left part, one thing you cannot accuse the left parties of is consistency. They have taken, you know, stands and nationally they may have one view of the Congress party. But your question was on Kerala. So, in the context of Kerala, CPM and the BJP are two sides of the same coin. Where are you? Oh, sorry. What? Gyan Vapi. I'll give you Gyan outside later. This is what Bharat Jodo Yatra. Let me say this. That in September of 1991, Parliament passed the Protection of Places of Worship Act. That act was passed by parliament and it still continues to be the law of the land. And what does this protection of places of worship act say? It says that the status of all religious places as it existed on the 15th of August 1947 will continue. Except Ayodhya. Because Ayodhya was subject to litigation. So parliament passed a law. Parliament means Congress, BJP, left, all parties. In 19, September of 1991, when Mr. P. V. Narasimha was the Prime Minister, parliament passed this law, places, Protection of Places of Worship Act, which said, that the status of a religious place will remain the same as it existed on the 15th of August 1947. 
so any bjp has been trying to change it does not have the courage to come to parliament and repeal that act but they are using the judiciary to do bypass surgery on this act but let us see what happens in the hearing the matter is sub judice now it's being heard let us see what happens but the only point i will make today is that parliament passed a law in september 91 and that law should be respected by all communities by all sections of society and if all attempts to circumvent the law should be defeated politically and of course legally <coughs> Prime face of Bharat Jodo Yatra. Actually, uh, Congress Party in general. No, no, there are many faces in the Congress yes, Party. But Rahul Gandhi is saying the uh, prime attack against uh, opposition BJP alone. But Rahul is still not ready to uh, uh, take a decision on case of this presidential election on, uh, and like that on the Congress presidential election. Rahul Gandhi is not ready to take a uh, decision, or he is not even ready to contest or. Do you have better knowledge of Mr. Rahul Gandhi's decision making than me? I don't think so. I don't know myself. Even even uh, may, may I, may go by, may I, may Nobody knows. He was asked this question last week, and let me repeat to you his answer. Because best is not to depend on people like me to answer on his behalf. You should listen to what he said. He said in a press conference at Nagar Coil. that nominations are going to begin on 24th before 24th you will continue to ask him why you are not contesting are you contesting then after nominations are over on the 30th on the first you will ask him why are you not contesting so you see the point is there is a system notification will be issued on 22nd 24th anybody who wants to file nomination including some mps who are keen to contest let them file the nomination mr rahul gandhi has never said that we should not have election congress party is the only political party in india that has election for the post of president does cpm elect does bjp elect does any regional party elect no congress party is the only political party that has yesterday you saw what happened in amadmi party the constitution was changed to make arvind kejriwal permanent president of the amadmi party we have announced an election schedule that election schedule you will know on the 1st of october who the candidates are if there is more than one candidate election will be held on october 17th if there is no election you will have a new congress president on the 2nd of october now i do, if you are asking me will mr rahul gandhi file his nomination i have no idea it's his decision but the way it is going you know he is going to be in the bharat jodo yatra he'll be in kerala when this election schedule you know is progressing he has consistently said i am one of the padyatris i am not leading the padyatri i am one of the padyatris there are 120 padyatris roughly 120 he is one of the padyatris so i congress president selection as i said we have announced 22nd is notification 24th to 30th is nomination 1st of october is scrutiny if election is required it will be held on 17th now let's see what happens in another 10 days you will have answers to all your questions
some restrictions on security, security, security. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, they meant to ask about the media restrictions. Oh, no, 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 not media. Yeah, there is security everywhere. For example, in the one of the routes that we had selected, we had to go through left-wing extremism affected areas, you know, in, in central India. We could not take that route, although it was a direct route. You would have seen in the daily, when Mr. Rahul Gandhi is walking, there is a security cordon. So we have to regulate media access. It's not free media access. We have to regulate the media access. Now, that, it creates problems. And, you know, I have had to apologize on more than one occasion because sometimes when the crowds are huge, when there's a lot of demand, some words get exchanged and it leads to unpleasantness. Yes, there have been a couple of occasions, uh, I have to say. But by and large, we are trying to streamline uh, this interaction process. And uh, Mr. Rahul Gandhi addressed a press interaction like this in Nagar Coil and on 21st he will be addressing a similar press interaction in Cochin, in Kochi. So we are trying every day, if you want, if any of you are interested, you can walk. We can facilitate your walking tomorrow and if you want to, you know, have access to him or at least around where he is walking, we can certainly facilitate that. Inka, whoever is interested in walking, you are welcome to walk tomorrow uh, and he is interacting. You can talk to Balram. Tomorrow he is interacting with cashew workers uh, and cashew uh, entrepreneurs tomorrow afternoon from 2 to 3.30. So Balram, you should organize this. security <laughs> In the Leundaya, the Pagira Matula Sampom, Osana Namshana, and Kim Ariana at Abadan Karina, Portana Mapology Sidiruno, Ini Ateratella, Karing Lavartika, the Rikam, and Ditula, Kramigar Nangalan, in the Uchiki Session, the Tachi, in the Malayala, the Shemati Mangal Tana Palerum, Rahul. Idelo <laughs> So does anybody want to walk tomorrow? Mathima Pravartagar Adakam, Alangal Matalagal, Nangal Nala Rahul Gandhi or Nadakan, Agar Hondangal, the Guru Munguti Paranal, Adinola Urkramigar Nanguri. So who wants to walk tomorrow? So uh, 
Lavanya, please make a note of all those who want to walk tomorrow, and you will have access. Okay? We will, to the extent that we can assure access, I will. Do, I won't be here, unfortunately, These but my colleagues will do it. entrepreneurs, this uh, second row. They want to meet Mr. Rahul Gandhi. Yes, they say yes. They want to meet Mr. Rahul Gandhi. Sure, we should. We should encourage them. Yeah, why not? Uh, see, tomorrow they are going to. Where are the Where are they meeting the cashew uh, uh, workers? Nindagara. 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 Shiva. Which order? Okay, so we'll work it out. Please, there are two groups of people. One is media, the other one is civil society, businessmen. So let's do both. We'll do it. But please make a note of all the media people who want to join. And give them priority. If you have a security clearance, you can get a security clearance. So please give your name and we'll take down your name. That's why we're going to get a name. That's why we're going to get a name. Betulnya baru yang berada, ada awalnya tadai gaya um, kerana awalnya, nama kita instruction pergi ada, awalnya kerjanya macam itu, dalam urusan cari itu, orang kena, ada yang lain, hanya satu. Ada terus satu. Mati apa perwatahan yang kita lakukan, kita streamline jadi satu. Kita nak terus satu, terus satu. We'll do it. See, I told you at the beginning, I apologize to you. It is a, it was some mix up yesterday, and problem in most people's minds. Particularly people who come from Delhi, there is national media and there is local media. For me, when I come to Kerala, Kerala media is national media, and that media is some other media. But you know, my mind is different. It's not like everybody else's mind. So yes, there's some been some misunderstanding. Some people, I apologize to you. So better to get your names now, and tomorrow we will do it. We'll try to work out a system for you, uh, for the whoever from the media people want to. My colleagues are here. They will work with you, and we will we'll work it out. I'm sorry what happened. I'm very sorry. To the extent that we are doing, we are trying to be very sensitive to ensure that no plastic waste is left behind, no amount of dirt is left behind. But your uh, caution is very well taken. I will go back. When I go back, I will talk to the people who are, you are worried about the solid waste management and so on. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Nah, malah ini deh, satu subcommittee dengan Green Protocol subcommittee Ruby garis cah dengan perwatahan anggal paramaudi kondoam pu serdikin dengan, pasi alagal, nama kita perdi cik aparat alagal berumbo, abang kita mungkin karya kita nama kita control ini lebih kiat orang dalam perasan lah. Terset, satu, aduh positif suggestion ni terdikah, terset. But I must tell you, in the last seven days, one minute please, I must tell you, in the last seven days, I have been living in a container. And my life has changed. You know how? In one bucket of water, one bucket, I am shaving, I am having a bath, I am using all my water requirements. You will take my friend in your house four buckets. I used to take four buckets in my house, but today I am managing in that container, in one in one bucket, the same container the BJP is saying is Taj Mahal. So there is only one bucket, and that bucket half the time the water doesn't come. So we fill the bucket with half the water. But I agree with you, disposal of water is something we have to be very careful about. I will go back. We will see that these systems are such that we don't leave a lot of waste behind. That I agree with you. We should 
Be little take sensitive. It, take it as a yeah, suggestion. in a positive spirit. Plastic waste, for example, we should not leave we plastic want, waste behind. It. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I agree. We are not washing clothes every day. We are washing clothes once in four days. We are not washing clothes every day. We are washing clothes once in four days. So we are trying to reduce. I mean, because the way we are living, you should come and see one container. Please go to the UNIS College of Engineering and see for yourself what this Taj Mahal of a container is. Two beds and one attached bathroom, that's all. Small. It's like a second class, second uh, two tier sleeper compartment. That's all there is to it. Okay? So you've got, you will give the names, you take the names of whoever is, wants to come. We will give your numbers also. We'll organize it in a systematic way. Thank you very much. Is lunch served? No. You're all invited for lunch. Bakshanam. Huh? It's a food packet.